she's back. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode number 84, 83, 80-something 80 of the Driftless Knitting Podcast. My name is Jennifer. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Driftless Knitter, and you can find the podcast on Ravelry under um, Driftless Knitting if you search under like the groups tab on there. Um, oh my gosh, here I am. I know you guys probably thought that I was, I don't know, that I had fallen off the face of the earth, <sighs> but I am back, and I'm so glad to be podcasting today. Um, things have just been so crazy. Life has been just really busy. Every single weekend I've had something going on or I've been out of town. Um, I did manage to record an episode like three weeks ago or so, maybe three or four weeks ago, but the quality of it was just really bad. Um, my light kept going out. It was nighttime, so there was no natural light at all, and it was just really, really terrible. So I ended up just <laughs> deleting that <laughs> footage um, and decided that I would put an episode up when I had the time and the equipment <laughs> to do one, to do it justice. So um, here I am. It is Sunday, October 5th. I think. No, yesterday was the 5th, October 6th. Um, and I'm coming to you from Cross Plains, Wisconsin, which is just a little bit outside of Madison. Um, it is a beautiful fall day today. It's a little bit um, chilly, although I, I thought it was going to be colder today. It's already about 55 um, degrees and it is um, almost 1130 in the morning. So, um, yeah, it just feels really good outside. There's a nice breeze coming in. I do have the, the sliding door open to get some fresh air in here. Um, I have a mold cider candle uh, burning, which you can't see and which you can't smell, but I can see and smell it, and that's what matters, right? <laughs> um, I've been burning that candle so much lately. It just gets me in such like an autumn, autumnal mood. Um, and I, I love that. I am drinking a cup of coffee out of my Rocky Mountain National Park mug. I got this mug when my husband Seaver and I went on our summer, we did a summer vacation this year and we went to Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, and I had to get this mug because I don't want to tip it too much because I do have coffee in there. Um, but it has all of the, all of the, um, trails not all of them but a lot of the trails on there and they're like labeled and stuff and a couple of the trails that we did are on the inside of this mug so I just it was such a good memento and reminder um, of that trip which was really cool so yeah okay so it has been I want to say two months it could be longer since I podcasted the last time. I have so much to show you, I don't even really know where to start. Um, I have a couple, I mean, I'll start where I always do, of course, but there's, I just feel like there's so much I want to talk to you about and so much I need to talk to you about and need to tell you about. So many things to show you, I'm just sort of like, I'm gonna try and not make this episode like two hours long. It could easily probably go that long though, <laughs> just with the amount of things um, that are going on right now. Um, but I guess, I guess I will just start where I usually do and everything else will sort of like just file into place. Um, and yeah, hopefully we cover everything. Hopefully I remember to cover everything. Of course, I didn't write any show notes like I usually don't. Um, <laughs> My preparedness is is not up to par, but yeah, let's just dive right in. If I forget something, hopefully I will be podcasting not in two months. Um, I have a couple weekends coming up where I do actually have free time, so fingers crossed that this is not the last episode until like after Christmas. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start um, with a work in progress 
you haven't seen any of these because it's been so long um, that all of these are new to you but um, I am keeping this in my fall my fall bag which I love and this was sent to me um, by a friend and I I think last time I was it the last time or was this the episode I deleted because I feel like I struggled remembering who sent this to me the last time but that's probably the episode you didn't see so <laughs> but anyway this was sent to me in kind of like a uh, exchange um, and I love this bag I always keep my autumn project uh, in this um, and right now I am knitting a pair of socks So this is a beautiful yarn by, oh, oh man, you guys, I'm just like so not prepared. I believe this is a Plank and Stella yarn um, in the colorway Autumn Crisp. And you can see it's got some like deep red burgundies and gray, and it even has like pops of bright green, but they don't show up very often. I think maybe up here you can see a little bit of that green and it's kind of like flashing I just realized that um, whoa I thought it was potentially gonna start micro striping because down here when I was doing the toe it was almost starting to micro stripe and then it sort of stopped but then it started again but then now I have this big swatch right here that's just all the different colors so I think it's gonna go between micro striping and just being like variegated which is kind of cool I kind of like that look and these are the birds and bud sock which is a pattern that I designed um, I started doing another um, pattern it wasn't anything that I've published before it was just something that I had put on a different sock and I started doing it without realizing it um, and realized like when I was a little less than this far I was probably like down here that I was doing the exact same thing I had done on the last pair of socks I did and it was just kind of boring me <laughs> I didn't want to do the same thing over again and especially with that one for some reason it just felt like I just needed to do something different and even though this is my third pair, third or fourth, this is my fourth pair of um, Birds and Buds, but I just love the little texture in there. You can see it's like here and here, you can see how it kind of, it doesn't really pop out. It just has this really subtle design on it. Um, and that comes from like doing slip stitches and like pulling the slip stitch over. Um, if you've knit my Show Some Love shawl, that one has the same kind of texture in parts of it. Um, and it's just really subtle, but it adds a little bit of something. And it gives you a little bit of um, interest in the sock without having it be too, I don't know, too busy. So I really like that. I started, I on Friday night, um, my best friend from high school, one of my best friends from high school was in um, in our hometown uh, out from DC she lives in DC and works in, works there and she was unexpectedly in from from out of town and I drove down Friday night to see her um, for a few hours so she's also a knitter and we were able to sit um, and drink some tea and chat and catch up um, and also do some knitting and while I, I got this sock out and I was kind of hemming and hawing about like I've already knit like part of the foot and I should just keep going but I'm really kind of bored with it and I just want to restart it and I was sitting there and she's just like just just rip it out just rip it out you're not gonna be happy and you're not gonna enjoy knitting the second one then if you you know are doing this pattern that you're not not liking so I ripped it out down to the toe picked everything back up and started this and I'm just I'm just loving it it's just such a addictive sort of pattern um, and I have a progress keeper on there from the gnome knitter that's my apple cider donut and 
yeah, I love it. I was telling somebody yesterday, I love a theme. So the autumn, you know, autumn comes around and I need to have my autumn bag. I need to knit a pair of autumny autumnal socks and I need to have my apple cider donut on there. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'm knitting these from the toe up, obviously. I do 56 stitches because um, my feet are fairly uh, narrow. Or they're not like super narrow, but they're, um, they're not very wide and they're smaller. Um, I only wear about a size seven. So yeah, so I only have to do 56 stitches and I am knitting these on a US one, um, 40 inch. That's my, my go-to sock needle. And yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. I got um, this much done Friday night when I, I took it back and then knit that up. Um, I did a little bit of knitting on it yesterday, but not a whole lot uh, because I started, get that guy back in there. I started a new project. So once October hit, it occurred to me that I didn't have very much time left to knit Christmas things <laughs> because I want to I'm not gonna go too crazy I knit a almost adult size sweater um, the flax I think it's the flax sweater yeah and um, I knit that for my cousin's son who's 11 and I turned it into a Weasley sweater so I duplicate stitched um, a C on it yes C I couldn't remember if I had done his first name or I had done their last name, but yeah, that was a whole big thing last year. If you if you watched the podcast or my Vlogmas episodes from last year, you would have seen that a lot. <laughs> um, but so I knit that for him last year, and then I knit a couple other things. But that that was my like really big last minute project, and I'm not doing anything like that this year. But I do want to knit my nephew and my godson each a sweater they're both three years old so um, it'll be a little bit easier than knitting like a full adult size sweater um, my sister just told me the other day that she would really like a pair of hand knit socks um, I didn't really know how I never know how people will feel about hand knit socks because I, I don't know I feel like some people are very like sensitive about what they put on their feet. If their feet get too hot or too cold, or they don't like the idea of putting something like wool on their feet. I don't know. It's such a, I obviously have no problem with it. And I don't know. I just think it's not as common to knit other people socks where it is common to knit other people like a cowl or a hat or something like that. So I never really think about knitting other people socks. Um, I have knit my husband two pairs of socks I think um, and he does wear them occasionally but I feel like I need to knit him socks out of better yarn, nicer yarn because the ones I knit was out of, I'm not saying that Regia is not a nice yarn but it's a little scratchier than, um, a little more rustic than some of the hand dyed yarns um, that I have and he <laughs> As tough as he is, he is a, his skin is a little bit sensitive, so he was saying like it kind of itches his ankles and stuff like that. So I am gonna try and knit him a pair of socks out of some really, really soft, smooth like merino nylon. I think he would like those a lot. Um, yeah, and then my sister Jill just kind of out of the blue was like, she I think she was joking. I was knitting socks and she's like, are those for me? And I'm like, no, but would you want a pair of socks? She's like, yeah, of course. And I'm like, would you wear hand knit socks? She's like, who wouldn't wear hand knit socks? And I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't know if people had hangups about it. But so I'm gonna knit her a pair of socks, I think for Christmas. Um, I think I already have the yarn picked out, but I just want to kind of look at my stash again um, and see if there's something else that, that screams her name a little bit more. Um, but anyway, so October hit and I realized I kind of needed to get going on a couple projects if I if I wanted to get both um, kid sweaters done plus a couple other things. I'll probably knit something for my mom because she is very knit worthy. She loves cowls and things for her neck. So that's always my go-to with her. Um, I picked out, I pick out something really soft 
Um, last year I knit her something with a little cashmere in it and she absolutely loved it. So I'll, I'll knit her something for sure and um, maybe Seaver, maybe. Maybe I'll get those socks done too for him, but I don't know. But anyway, so yesterday, last night, I cast on the first of the two kids sweaters that I'm doing. And this looks really, really small, but I'm following the directions for a size four to six. Um, I think this is the front. The stitch marker, the, um, the beginning of round stitch marker is not like at the front. It's at one of the side sleeves, like the raglan sleeves. So I think this is the front here. And this is, oh my gosh. I can't remember the name of the sweater. It's in French. It's like petite, meh, something. It starts with an M. I found it on Ravelry. I will put the name of it down here um, with the designer because I probably would screw it up anyway because I can't speak French. Um, but this originally was a pattern for a striped sweater. Um, but I liked the top down. I liked the raglan and I liked the texture that was on it. So I decided to just do it, um, in a plain yarn. This is Barocco, um, ultra wool in their fingering weight. So it's ultra wool fine, which they have ultra wool fine and ultra wool DK now, which I'm so excited about because they used to just make the worsted when it first came out. Um, and it was, it quickly became one of my favorite, um, hundred percent wool worsted or super wash wool weights, super wash wool yarns. Oh my gosh. I can't talk. Um, I liked how soft it was, but it still felt a little bit wooly. Um, it was nicer to me than Cascade 220 Superwash and then way nicer than Rowan Superwash Wool, which I had used both um, in the past. And when Barocco came out with their Ultra Wool, I used it once and just fell head over heels for it. Um, and then I, re I think they brought out the DK next I hadn't worked with that one, but I was really excited for the different options. And then now they have the Ultra Wool Fine, um, which is the fingering weight. So, so excited. I think knitting sweaters out of this is going to be so fun because it does have that little bit of a wooly feel, um, but it's, it's, it's actually, it's such a weird combination between wooly and soft. Um, it's not a merino wool. It's just kind of a, Com um, combination wool I think um, that they source and obviously the superwash process makes it a little softer but yeah it's just a it's a great yarn um, if you're looking for something very reasonably priced too it's wonderful so um, this is I don't think they have colorway names um, but this is just a green like heather color it probably has a name on the or a number on the tag, but I didn't, I didn't grab the tag. So, and I have two balls of this that I think will get me through the sweater. I think I'll have a bit of extra, but, um, this sweater does some short rows. So the back here is a little bit longer than the front. Um, I did those short rows last night and then started the raglan, uh, increases. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that there, but that's my one sleeve and then over here is the second sleeve and that's the front like I showed you and then I have a progress keeper on here as well and that is a beautiful hand painted progress keeper by uh, Katie of Lock and Lou and again a terminal <laughs> this was on another project that I just finished um, that I will show you in a little bit. And it was so perfect because the colors of that shawl are just, they scream fall time. Um, and so I had that on there first. And then since I finished that shawl, I wanted to wanted to keep this little guy around. So I clipped him onto, onto Ronan's sweater. This one is for my nephew, Ronan. Um, and then I have yarn upstairs for my godson's sweater. Um, but yeah, so I just got this started, like I said. Um, I am not sure. It's a French translation, the um, the pattern. 
So I'm worried that there might be a couple of things that I'm not 100% clear about, but I'm just going to do the raglan increases and do the texture. Um, the texture wasn't working out 100% correctly last night with my numbers, even though I have the right amount of right amount of stitches on the needle. So I'm just gonna kind of do something that looks good to me, um, keep it consistent, do the raglan increases until I have the right number of stitches, and then go from there. So I'm gonna use this pattern as more of like a guideline um, and not, you know, be so I don't know paranoid about stitch count and my the texture working out so as long as it looks good as long as it fits in it does look kind of small though but maybe not I don't know his head he's got a big head but and that is pretty stretchy he's like three and I keep forgetting like how big he is because I still think of him as my baby my baby nephew but yeah, he is getting pretty big, but I think that that should fit him. But um, yeah, those are the two things I'm working on right now. Yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of finished objects <laughs> to show you. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna start with one that you were, at, you actually saw me working on this. Um, so this will be familiar to you. But yes, first finished object is the Kyria Cove Shawl by Tammy Gore. I love this. So it's got these eyelets over here. This is where you start with your main color and then you add in your complement color. You do some fun, woo, some fun striping. And yeah, it's just, it's so beautiful. Um, I finished this one quite a while ago. I've worn it a couple of times and it's wonderful. It's very soft. Um, I love the garter stitch texture. It makes it so squishy. And I, I'm like in a garter stitch like mode right now. The other shawl I have to show you is also garter stitch. And I'm just like itching to knit, just knit, just knit, 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 knit. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of, Oh, I'm really enjoying that right now, but um, I knit this out of the Woolberry Fiber Company yarn. This green is their everyday sock base, I want to say. It's a BFL and nylon. Yes, BFL nylon. This is the woodland colorway. So it's got that green, but then it also has these really dark pops of like really dark green but also it's almost like this reddish brown that sort of gets thrown in there um that was a really fun colorway to knit with but then this one the complement color is their 100 percent merino yarn i don't know what the base is called but um this is the graham's garden colorway this has been one of my favorites since i started following bethany um and her dyeing she's dyed this colorway for a long time and i was able to get some last spring when um, she and her husband came to Knit Circus for a trunk show um, before they moved to Colorado. They used to live in Wisconsin, so they were pretty local. And recently they've moved to Colorado, which is great. I think, I think they both lived there at one time before. Um, and I think I love following their stories and um, I get their like newsletter thing uh, in my email which is really fun to read so I, I enjoy them as a I don't know like following their family and seeing what they're doing it's it's really fun but um, yeah that colorway is so pretty it's got all those pinks and orange green some other fun floral colorway colors on that cream base so that one is really fun to knit with and the the hundred percent merino was really really soft and really enjoyable to knit um, you can definitely tell a difference between the two though i don't really mind so much and i i love bfl yarn so um but yeah definitely it's a little more uh, silky a little more buttery and the one of my favorite things about this shawl which seems so minor is the edging i did a well the pattern calls for a an i-cord bind off 
and I've done I-cord bind-offs before. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's just so such a good finish. It looks so polished, so done, like, yeah. So that was really cool, and um, I, I actually enjoyed, enjoyed doing that, even though it takes so much longer than regular bind-off. It was really nice. So yeah, that's the Curia Cove shawl. Wanted to give you that update since I think last time I podcasted, I was still working on that. <laughs> um, okay, trucking right along here. Uh, my next finished object is, let me just tuck this end in because I forgot to weave it in. This is a pair of socks that I finished a few, we few weeks ago. Um, a couple weeks ago, I should say. This is out of a yarn that my former boss got for me when she was in South Africa. I think it was really funny. I f thought I lost the tag, and then I found the tag, and then I think I thought I didn't need the tag, so I just threw it away. <laughs> Even though I remember thinking like, oh, I need to check and make sure I get the name of that company right. I think it's something like like cowgirl blue cowgirl blues I don't remember but it's um, a beautiful hand dyed yarn I actually didn't realize that this was 100% merino um, so they might wear out a little bit faster than some of my other socks but that's okay they're gonna be really soft and cozy while they last <laughs> So this is the pair that I did a like new kind of new pattern on. Um, I don't have this written up or anything, but this is just kind of a broken rib that goes up the front, and then I also did it on the the whole leg. Um, so you can see there's like the the pearls, but it's not just like a knit pearl every round. There's some like just knit knit rounds through there. Um, and I thought I was doing something else on my new pairs of socks, but or my new pair of socks, but it just turned out to be the exact same thing. Um, <laughs> I must have just had this pattern lodged in my brain, but I quickly realized, like I said, that I didn't want to do the same thing right after I finished these. But yeah, I'm excited to wear these too. Um, I don't know what the colorway name is. I was really bad and I threw that tag away. So yeah, but they're pretty, aren't they? I knit these, quite a lot of these when I was helping Seaver um, on his parents' farm a few weekends ago. I got so much knitting done. We were in the tractor like all day. Um, and yeah, my, my productivity that weekend, even though I was riding along with him and and helping out we were filling silos so I got to kind of work work a couple machines um, but yeah it was my productivity was through the roof it was amazing um, and I f almost finished like the whole first sock that weekend um, but yeah it was great so that's that I can't remember if I was still working on my birdie bots uh, socks the last time I podcasted I want to say maybe I was I didn't grab those but I did finish them they're finished they're blocked they're actually in my little um, Tupperware container not Tupperware what would that be it's like a bin that I keep my socks in um, I guess it could be Tupperware they make more than just like kitchen things so um, but yeah so they're up there um, in my closet and that was also the birds and buds um, sock pattern as well and yeah I just I couldn't remember I didn't want to talk about them again if I had before and um, I figured I would just let you know that they're done woohoo go me <laughs> oh I have an end coming out of here um, okay so the next thing that I, once I get this end pulled through, okay, there we go. The next thing that I wanna show you is, it's a new finished object. You haven't really seen this before unless you watched my 
vlog about my retreat, which is up on YouTube, you would have seen the very, very start of this project. I cast this on um, few week, three weeks ago when I was on my, my knitting retreat that I organized, um, which was a lot of fun. I'll talk about that more in a second. But started this, um, I had this idea for a shawl using uh, Knit Circus Yarn's new local DK base, which we call Driftless DK. Um, it's a yarn that was grown and raised, the fiber was raised in Wisconsin. It's a 80% wool and 20% alpaca yarn. Um, it was milled in Viroqua, not Viroqua, it was milled at the Utopia Fiber Mill, which is actually in Lafarge, Wisconsin. The, fi the yarn store, Utopia Yarn Store, which is owned by the same people, um, that's in Viroqua. So, um, so it was milled at the Utopia Fiber Mill, it was dyed in Madison by us, and then we sell it. So I had this yarn, I wanted to do something special, and I decided that um, I wanted to come up with my own pattern. So I just finished this this past week. I haven't blocked it yet. It does need, it doesn't need to be like shaped too much, but it just needs to sort of relax a little bit. So I'm gonna wet block it. Um, and then I'm gonna release this pattern, not this upcoming week, but the week after. Um, we have our Madtown Yarn Shop Hop the weekend of the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Um, and I'm gonna have it on display there, but I'm gonna release it the Thursday before, so the 17th, um, and I'm gonna release it for a limited time being, I want. I can't decide if I'm going to put it up for a percentage off or just like reduce the price by a lot. But just as kind of a fun, like, before the shop hop, those of you who follow me on Instagram or watch my podcast, um, as an incentive kind of to, to maybe download it then, because then it'll be on display the 18th, 19th, 20th, and everybody else, you know, that maybe hasn't discovered my podcast or anything yet, um, you know, it'll be like full price for them. Does that make sense? Um, I kind of want to give like I said, an incentive to people who have either bought my patterns before, um, so it might show up on the Ravelry or follow me on Instagram or, or watch the podcast. Um, so anyway, this is a DK weight shawl. It's a garter stitch shawl. I'm, I love it so much. Okay, so you start, you start down here and then you've got your three colors. I did a gold, an orange, and a dark, dark red. You can see them better when you get to when they are a little bit um, thicker. And this, if you are looking at this yarn online, um, this is our Creamy Sheep, which is just undyed. The gold is called Wisconsin Desert. The orange, here, let's get to an even bigger area because as it grows, as it like gets thicker, the, oh geez, I keep dropping everything, the stripes of the colors get thicker too. And then the very last one, then you get this big swatch of the beautiful burgundy, dark, dark, dark red. But yeah, so the orange is, or the yellow is Wisconsin Desert. The orange is Wildcat Mountain and this dark purpley red is called Devil's Doorway. And see, it looks like black, doesn't it, in the light? But I swear to you, it is the darkest, deepest red. It's so pretty, oh my God, it's so pretty. Um, but all of these are named after local um, places and landmarks and things like that. So Wisconsin Desert is actually a place outside of Spring Green that um, it has the ecosystem of a desert, which is really, really interesting. Just the way that it's like on the other side of like a cliff or something, and the way that the wind and the sun and the rain doesn't really get to it as much. Um, it has it has cactuses and things like that. It's just the craziest thing. Um, so that's 
uh, Wisconsin desert, and then Wildcat Mountain is a, um, a an area, or it's a mountain, a small mountain, um, that is a little bit west of us, I want to say, northwest of us here in Madison. Um, there's some good hiking there. My dad actually used to live um, around there, around Wildcat Mountain. And then Devil's Doorway refers to this beautiful natural rock formation that is at Devil's Lake State Park in Baraboo, Wisconsin. And that is one of the most beautiful state parks. If you haven't been there, it is incredible. Um, there is swimming on the, there's these beautiful beaches you can swim at in the summer. There's beautiful hiking. It's, it's really awesome. So yeah, Devil's Doorway is kind of the thing that um, everybody sort of hikes up to see. It's got, it's like these two big rocks and then there's a rock on top and they call that Devil's Doorway. So anyway, so yeah, this is one of my latest patterns and I can't wait to put this out there. Um, you obviously don't have to use the Driftless DK you can use any DK. Um, you need about 220 yards, 230 yards of the white. You need about 230-ish, little less, of the red. Um, and then you need about 100 each of the orange and, so like, complement color one, complement color two, you need 100 yards, and then complement color three, you need a little over 200 probably. So yeah. I hope you guys, <laughs> I hope you guys like this. I had so much fun knitting on this. It was just, it was fabulous. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, yeah, so keep your eye out for an Instagram post about that. I'm also hoping to get maybe an episode recorded. Oh no, probably not before that weekend. Probably the Monday after the Shop Hop weekend I'll be able to record an episode because I'm taking that that day off. Um, but yeah, I, I want to give you guys an incentive to maybe buy that early um, on the Thursday and then it'll be obviously on Ravelry after that as well. But um, so if you don't catch this until after that, it'll still be available, but yeah. So speaking of new patterns, I have another one coming out tomorrow. What? Tomorrow. I'm so excited. This is another DK weight shawl, which is crazy. I'm all into the DK apparently. Um, this is the top. Yeah. Okay. So this is, oh, and I don't know what I'm calling that one yet. I'm thinking I'm going to call it Drift, but I don't know if that has been overdone. I don't want to do, it makes sense to call it Driftless because I'm the Driftless Knitter. I don't have a, a pattern called Driftless yet. It's Driftless DK, but I don't know if that's like just overdoing the name completely. <laughs> like, is that just a little bit of overkill? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to call that, but I'll figure that out soon. <laughs> this one, however, is called Riverbank. It's a little wrinkly because I've been wearing it, <laughs> but this is another asymmetrical shawl. It's a little bit different though. It gets wider because you're not, um, you are only increasing, you're not decreasing, whereas that one you sort of increase twice and then you decrease once, so it's sort of like moves like that. This one, it's just going out like that. So it gets a little bit deeper. This one took two skeins of DK weight yarn that I believe were each 250 yards. So it's about 500 yards total. And this has a really cool texture. You can see, I don't know which angle is better to see it. It's very subtle, but um, it's created by cables going throughout the whole thing a two by two cable or not yeah a two by two cable which is like a cable four um so yeah it just reminds me of water kind of the way that water moves the ripples in the water it's very subtle but yeah 
can probably see, I hope you can see that a little bit better. I can't really see the camera while I'm showing that to you, but yeah, so you just do that the whole length. You're increasing, and it is just such a snuggly, warm, beautiful sweater. It's not sweater. <laughs> Shawl. Oh my gosh. I wore this last weekend when um, Seaver and I went to Winona, Minnesota to a bluegrass festival. We have gone in the past. It's one of my one of my favorite things. It's called Boats and Bluegrass and it is on the banks of the Mississippi um, at a camp, campground there and it is the most fantastic thing. We had such a good time. We listened to such good music. It was so much fun. And we also took photos of the shawl um, while we were there, which was really cool because we were on the banks of the Mississippi and this is called Riverbank. And yeah, it was, it was pretty perfect. But um, I will just tilt this down a little bit so you can see how that looks. You can kind of see the cables there. It just sort of, sorry, my tripod is sticky so it doesn't it doesn't like actually tilt anymore I have to get a new tripod anyway so yeah I love it um oops I don't know if I set you back where you were originally um yeah it's it's really nice um DK weight just makes such a nice warm accessory and yeah, I can't wait for everybody else to try it. I do have some friends who were um, on the retreat with me. I gave them this pattern for free um, at that retreat. So a couple of them are already knitting it, which is really, really exciting. And I think um, tomorrow, for tomorrow only, I will post about this on Instagram too, because I'm not 100% when this is gonna go out. Hopefully tonight, <laughs> so you can see this um, if you get a chance to, to watch it later on today or tonight. Um, tomorrow, this is going to be half price, 50% um, off. Yeah, I just, I want as many people to get this shawl as they can. Um, it'll go back up in price to like a normal, like $6 or something like that um, on Tuesday. But on Monday, tomorrow, the 8th, the 7th, oh my gosh, my brain, where is my brain? The 7th of October, um, it is going to be half price. So keep your eye out for that. Um, yeah, and I hope you all love it. Like I said, two skeins of DK weight will do it. And you'll just have an awesome uh, accessory. This is knit out of Dye Monkey Yarns. Her DK weight uh, merino, 100% merino base. And this is the Daybreak colorway in case anybody is wondering. I don't know if she still dyes this, but um, yeah, but her her yarn is beautiful no matter what color you choose. So, um, or obviously there's a lot of beautiful dyers out there. You can <laughs> find two skeins of DK weight, um, but yeah. Okay, so that is all of the knitwear, the finished objects, the new patterns, the works in progress, all of that stuff. Now I'm going to show you a few things that I purchased over the last two months. And let me just check how long I've been talking. Okay, almost 45 minutes. Not too bad. Um, <laughs> let's see how fast I can get through this. So let's see. These came first, I think. So let me show you this. We, um, we did actually still in our shop technically, but I think I'm going to have to send it back next week. Um, we did two trunk shows over the course of September um, with two indie dyers at Knit Circus. And what we do with those is we host a hand dyed yarn from a different indie dyer for a month, or sometimes it's like three weeks or so. Sometimes it's a little bit longer because I asked them if we could keep it for a little bit, a little bit longer, but I, I think I have to send it back next week, like I said. Um, so this past month we hosted Orange Jellyfish Dream um, and we also hosted Lola Bean. So that was super exciting to have both of their yarns in our shop. Um, I'm going to, oh I forgot I got a new, I just, 
I brought this home in a bag and I forgot that I got a new soak. This is the Unleash colorway. Not colorway. The Unleash scent, which um, they just released again. It's the Ravelry, like, it was the Ravelry special scent um, a few years ago, and they didn't make it, you know, it was a limited edition, and then they just re-released it, so um, I was really excited because I loved that scent, and I do use um, Tuft Woolen's soap, um, their sock soap, for blocking and washing and things, but I also use the soak when I, I don't know, I feel like this is a little bit better for like regular laundry too, not just hand knits. Um, and when I really, really want a a tough, tougher clean maybe than what the Tuft Woolens could give me, um, I grab the soak. I, I like using them both. This is a non-rinse also, so I don't have to, I don't have to worry about getting all of the um, the soap off of the garment if it's something really big or something like that. Um, so yeah, the soak the soak works good for for certain things as well. But anyway, I did pick up a few skeins of yarn from those trunk shows. Um, the first I'll show you is the Lola Bean, and this is both of these are her Bean Sprout colorway, which is an 8020 Superwash Merino and Nylon. It's a fingering weight. It's my favorite ply because it is that beautiful sort of bouncy two-ply, um, and an 80-20 is like my favorite uh, combination. It's just so soft, so beautiful. And this is her Un Coco Loco colorway. And you can see those beautiful speckles. It's just very like earthy. There's some blue, there's some green, there's some tan, there's some yellow, and I really liked. And the base, like the background itself is not, I don't think it's 100% like undyed. It has like a creamy yellow um, base to it. So I think that's actually been dyed and then she's speckled on top of it. Oh, that blew out really badly, sorry. So you can see all of those beautiful speckles. And then the second one, I've been holding off buying this because I was really hoping that she was gonna send it in the trunk show. <laughs> and if she didn't, then I was gonna order it or get it somewhere else. Um, but this is her Dobby colorway. And I, I think this was a club. I think she did a club and I saw this and she had it next to her inspiration photo of Dobby and I just remember thinking like that is perfect that is and it's I don't know oh, it's not gonna do it justice here but it the base is like this tanny brown it's got grays and um, you know you could see those grays running through it and it's got like green speckles um, it's got some like dark orangey brown speckles and yeah, I'm just trying to dig because sometimes the speckles will get like hidden if it's twisted. Um, but yeah, oh, I just love it. This is going to be some a pair of socks for me, 100%. So excited. Everybody was going crazy for the Georgia Peach colorway, which if you follow her and you know at all of her trunk shows and everything, that sells out like within minutes and for us it wasn't minutes but we did have people calling us we were sending it to them even though they weren't local and we had people calling to like set some aside for them it was insanity but um i was more excited about the dobby colorway <laughs> but that just shows you how much of a harry potter fan and a nerd i am and yeah like i said i saw this one such a long time ago and i've wanted it ever since so that was super exciting. Um, so we also had Orange Jellyfish Dream. I knew I needed this immediately when I saw it. This is called Stardust. This is a bulky weight. It's 106 yards, 100% superwash merino. And there's something about this right here that just grabbed me. And I'm not like a huge bright neon-y person 
but that with the blue oh my gosh that just blew me away and this is orange jellyfish dreams um tag i don't think she's quite as well known as lola bean but it was fun to have both of their yarn there um because they have such different styles of dyeing and different weights too so adela sent us um fingering and dk of lola bean and then um sarah from orange jellyfish she sent us some worsted some super bulky some bulky and and fingering weight as well but um she kind of threw in some heavier ones in there so it was just really fun to have like both at the same time people had a lot of a lot of choices um so that was the first one that i got and then actually recently i picked up a couple more orange jellyfish be because um I actually just found out one of my college roommates she's having her second baby and they just found out that they're having a girl so I had it in my head that if if Amber was gonna have a girl I was going to buy these two skeins and knit a baby blanket so I loved the bright pink speckles and it's on kind of like a baby pink um, base but then it has that like bright not bright but like the deeper purples um, you know the hot pink kind of speckled and Sarah said that these were these are one of a kind she accidentally put purple on these instead of gray she has a colorway that's like pink and gray um, and she had grabbed the wrong like container of dye and thrown purple on it instead and she's like that's not what that's supposed to look like but I think it's the perfect baby colorway. And it's kind of non-traditional. I mean, it's pink and purple, but it's a little kind of funky with the, with the hot pink speckles in there. So this is a DK weight. It's 100% merino, 250 yards. Um, and yeah, I have an idea for what I'm gonna do for a little blanket for that. And then I also grabbed another skein of DK. Um, yeah, DK. And this one I just had to take home because I had been staring at it for so long. I have no idea what I'm going to knit with this. Um, but the speckles on here just, I don't know. They, they just, I couldn't send this back. I had to take this home. And this is actually kind of unique for me. This is on a yellow base. Um, and then it has all those blue speckles. So like this is totally me. The yellow, usually not so much, but there was something about it. I just, I had to have it. So yeah. And this one's called um, Celestial. And I think this was like the only skein of this that she sent us. Um, yeah, it's just way too cool. Um, yeah, so that is most of the yarn <laughs> that I have picked up over the last two months, two months and then some probably, um, but I do have a little bit more. This kind of goes in with the talk about my retreat though, so I will give you a very brief overview if you want kind of more details about it. I do have a vlog up on my YouTube channel um, about the retreat, and um, <laughs> in that video, I more than once, I think two or three times, I am talking about it being October. It definitely was not October, it was September, but my brain, I don't know where my brain was. I was so, I was so, I don't know, tired, I guess. Um, I was slightly stressed out because that was just, it was a lot going on. I had a lot of stuff to do at work and then the retreat and the, I think I was just, my, my brain was wiped. Um, so yeah, if you're watching that and you're like, what is she talking about? It is not October. <sighs> yeah, craziness. Um, but yeah, it was. I got some really good footage of the space that we were in. We were at a um, little retreat center in the hills of Viroqua, Wisconsin. It was beautiful. It was warm, but not too warm. We got to sit outside. Um, we got to go for walks. Um, obviously do a lot of, a lot of knitting. Um, on the deck and then also um, we had this beautiful sort of bigger room where there were tables set up so we didn't have to sort of cram into the little living room 
that was in our in our uh, space. Um, so we were able to spread out. We ate in there. Um, it had these big windows, so it let in a lot of light, and then it had really good lighting um, on like in the ceiling. Um, so we spent the majority of the time there knitting and not actually in our lodge, like in the living room of the lodge. So that worked out really well. Um, we went to the Utopia Fiber Mill on Saturday morning, the Saturday of the retreat, and that was really informative and really cool. Um, it made me want to start a mill. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, I probably, probably wouldn't um, find it as romantic and lovely and oh look at this this creative endeavor because it is a lot of work so much work but when you're just watching it you're like wouldn't it be great to be involved with that um yeah so much work uh, but it was really really fascinating and then after that we went to their yarn store which is um, kind of on the other side we were, our retreat center was like right in the middle so it wasn't really too far from anything but um, we went into Viroqua to the the yarn shop then did some damage um, and we then went out for lunch went to the co-op to kind of stock up on wine and cheese and <laughs> goodies like that uh, which was fabulous and then um, went back to the retreat space on Saturday, knit outside, enjoyed the beautiful weather. Um, we, a group of us walked down by, there's a river that's on the property that runs through the, through the property. So we went down there and just sort of, yeah, just soaked in the nature. Um, yeah, a lot of people made good progress on their projects. We had um, Melissa who steeked her first sweater. She finished the knitting of it and then steeked it, and it was so much fun to watch that progress. I have it pretty well documented in that video as well. Um, and then we had a really good meal Saturday night. Um, Seaver, my husband, ended up cooking for us because both of my, um, both of the things that I was going to, the place I was going to have cater, they fell through kind of last minute and I was freaking out about how I was going to feed my guests and he kind of told me it was going to be okay and he volunteered to make a couple pots of homemade soup, um, which he does really well. He made a beautiful butternut squash sort of um, creamy soup and a um, venison stew with our own um, with our own venison so really really good hearty food um, really tasty and I, I think everybody loved it there was only about um, eight of us total at that point one of the ladies had to leave early on Friday um, not because of anything that happened but she uh, she's Actually, my friend Carolyn, I've probably talked about her before on here, but um, she lives kind of local to there, about 20 minutes away, and she came Friday night. She helped me set up, and then she stayed and um, hung out and knit for a while, but she had to leave Friday and go back home because they had something planned for Saturday, So, which it would have been so fun to have her the whole weekend, but I totally understand. She's got little kids, and they are in the process of, you know, kind of doing some things at home and she just had to get home for, for that. So, um, yeah, it was really great to spend some time with her. It was, I met a couple new people that I, I hadn't, um, ever interacted with before. So Carla, uh, she came, she's actually kind of related to me because she is my father-in-law's cousin or second cousin. But anyway, um, she's part of that family which was really really neat to meet her and my mother-in-law was there she's a knitter and crocheter she really wanted to come um and she's a hoot and uh so yeah so her and carla kind of got a chance to like reconnect a little bit and that was really fun um and then andrea and her mom um joanne joanne i almost said joanna definitely not jo joanne were there um and it was so much fun to, I had met both of them before, or maybe I hadn't met Joanne. 
definitely met Andrea and um, they own a yarn shop in the kind of Milwaukee area not in Milwaukee oh where is it oh I can't remember shoot sorry guys can't remember exactly where it is but um I will look that up and hopefully put that at the bottom here um, so it was really fun to talk to them about their experiences and they're so much fun they're so funny um, and then my friend Emily and my friend Melissa were there um, Carmen came up for a day so it was just there was a really great group of people um, and I loved hanging out with all of you guys if you're watching thank you again for supporting the retreat and taking a chance on it even though it was the first retreat retreat I had ever planned um, it was fabulous so we had such a good time so much fun <sighs> and now I just like I want to go back to that to that place it was so beautiful and so relaxing and yeah maybe we'll do it again hopefully we'll do it again um, but anyway so when we were at the the yarn shop in Viroqua at Utopia I did end up buying some yarn so they were so generous and they gave us kind of a, a discount on some things. They gave us 10% off of all Utopia brand um, yarn and then 20%, not an extra 20, but 20% if you bought a sweaters quantity. Um, so I did both. No, I'm just kidding. I <laughs> So I found this yarn. This is their um, BFF, BFL BFF, which is 100% blue face luster wool. It's a sport weight, and this color just kept screaming at me. It's this beautiful gray, taupey brown. Sometimes it looks brown and tanny, kind of a taupey tan. Sometimes it looks gray, depending on what light you're in. It has, I mean, just the depth of color on there. I just kept going back to it. It's called Graphite. And this is their brand of yarn, the Utopia. And then, so I was going to buy four of these to knit a sweater. I kind of had one in mind. But then I had these two that I really loved. This is, it's the same, it's the same base, the BFL. This is called Shiitake. And it's just like a tannish cream, but it again it has like this beautiful depth of color and I really liked it with the tree bark colorway which is a it's kind of showing up weird but it's a orangey red so pretty and I liked these two together and then I saw them in the bag with their friends. These weren't meant to like be together, but I saw them all together and I thought that would make a really pretty color work pullover. And then something popped up on my Instagram. I forget the name of the pattern, but it's coming out soon and it is a DK sport weight color work pullover and it's perfect. And immediately I was like yep that's what I'm doing with these so I'll try and put that down here as well I feel like I'm gonna be doing a lot of like notes at the bottom of the screen because I can't remember anything but yeah this obviously will be the main color that grayish brown and then these two will be the woo <laughs> the complement colors um, it takes um, only three colors the sweater that I'm thinking of doing and I don't mind that this and this aren't like super contrasty. I kind of like that because then this will be the main, the one that like pops out. And this will be a really good base. <sighs> I'm so excited. This is my second sweater quantity of BFL BFF though. So I really need to get going <laughs> and, knit, and knit a couple sweaters. Um, yeah, but I feel like I've gotten a lot of progress in the last couple months. Um, oh, I have another, oh my gosh, I almost forgot. I have another finished object 
you guys have hadn't seen that one either um though you've probably seen it on my instagram because i posted a, quite a few times about it but i did film a little snippet of video before i had to take it to knit circus because it's a sample so i will put that in right here <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, as you know, I am filming this a little bit um, before the actual podcast. Today is Thursday, October 3rd. Um, I had to think about that for a second. I am, it's, it's the morning, it's before work. I'm still, I'm still working on my first cup of coffee. But I, I wanted to show you guys a project that I don't think I'll have time or I should rephrase that it won't be with me anymore um, when I actually film the podcast episode which I'm really hoping to do on Sunday um, hopefully you guys are watching an episode that I filmed on Sunday um, the 6th of October that's like the first day that I have a good chunk of free time here at home um, I'm really excited to get a podcast episode out for you guys, but I wanted to show you this project in person and I don't think I'm going to be able to hold on to it till Sunday. Also, you may have noticed I'm standing up. I'm not in my usual space. That is because I left my tripod in my car, did not have time to run down and go get it. Um, yeah, so we're just cobbling this together. Uh, the reason why I'm so desperate to show this to you is because it is a sample for Knit Circus Yarns which is where I work and I have to bring it with me today. So yeah, <laughs> um, this project, I don't know if, because it's been so long since I um, podcasted, I don't think you guys saw this at all, which is ridiculous. That means it's been like two months since I podcasted and I apologize profusely. Life has just been so busy lately. Um, but this gorgeous, gorgeous project was such a fun knit. Um, I wanted to do a sample out of a new colorway that we released at Knit Circus um, a few weeks ago. Um, well, I guess it's about a month or so now, but. And um, when I originally got this yarn, even before we released it, because we get kind of like, we got to place like an early order because we all, all the staff loved it so much. So I got this quite a while ago and it was earmarked for this specific sweater and I'm so, so happy that I got it done and that now I can wear it uh, when the weather starts getting colder. So this, without further ado, is the Find My Way sweater by Tristan Molina of Dragon Horde Yarn. And I have to make sure the front and back are pretty similar. The only difference is that the um, front hem is a little bit is a little bit lower, or sorry, higher. The back hem is lower. Okay, so I am showing it to you in the right direction. So this is the front, and as you can see, it has. I'm just sort of going to step to the side. It is a boxy style sweater with a split hem, you can see that on the side. It's got gorgeous cables. You can really see the definition of them there with the light sort of bouncing off of them. But it's got these gorgeous cables and the sleeves have them too. If I can spread that out a little bit, Let me try and get a little closer. As you can also probably tell, I have not finished getting ready, so that's why I still got some wispies going on. Um, but it has a beautiful cable. The same one that's um, going down the front of the sweater is also going down the sleeves. And then it ends with this beautiful twisted rib. This colorway is called Say Hello to Buckbeak. It was part of our Harry Potter yarn club, um, but then we released it as a regular color as well. Um, it's a DK weight. I used about five skeins of yarn for this. I knit the size small, I believe. Um, when I first tried it on after I finished the knitting, it was a little tight. It's supposed to be this like wide boxy type sweater. 
Um, for those of you who have seen it on Ravelry, you know, it looks very comfy, it's very loose, and yeah, it definitely has that boxy shape. So when I tried it on, it was very form-fitting, and I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> this is not the way it's supposed to look. Um, I thought maybe my gauge was off a little bit, which it could have been, but um, I knew that when I wet blocked it, it was going to really, really kind of um, relax. There was a lot of like stretchiness to it, and um, I knew that all the stitches were gonna relax and I could kind of like spread it out a little bit, like even more so, um, and just sort of manipulate it a little bit like that. So that turned out to be correct. Um, I actually have not tried this on again, uh, just because it dried over the weekend and then I just, I don't know, I haven't had time. Maybe I'm a little bit scared to put it on because I want it to fit right. And the first time, yeah, the first time I wore it, I was like, oh, that's not the way it's supposed to look. But I still love it. Um, you can see the color there. I'll hold it up a little bit. And you can see that cable pretty well. It was designed to be, making sure I'm not getting the sleeve in my coffee cup. <laughs> um, it was designed to be knit with um, a variegated and all the like busy cables and stuff, I, I don't think it takes away from, I don't think the variegation takes away from the pattern much at all. Uh, so yeah, it has those beautiful blues and browns, a little bit of white. Um, yeah, I love it. And um, what was I gonna say? DK weight. I feel like I was gonna say something else. And now I can't remember. Maybe what size needles I used? I used the, what, the, what the pattern calls for, which I believe is a six and an eight. Um, and I did have a little bit of yarn left over from those five skeins. I think enough to maybe make a hat, which is really exciting. And yeah. Oh, I was gonna say that I um, alternated skeins. So I did do like two, because parts of it you knit flat, parts of it you knit in the round. So um, when I was knitting flat, I did uh, two rows like there and back with one yarn and then switched and did there and back with the other yarn. Um, and then when I was knitting in the round, I did um, every round a different, different yarn. So yeah, so it worked out well and I'm really, really happy with it. And I can't wait to, um, have this go on Knit Circus's website too because that's really really exciting. We can feature some of our beautiful yarn but then also Tristan's awesome sweater pattern. So yeah, I just wanted to show that to you guys. I'm so excited. This is really really this has been on my list since she published it so it was really cool to actually get something off of your like queue out of your queue and knit it out of the yarn you wanted to knit it in. I mean that just the feeling of accomplishment is just amazing. So I'm really, really excited. Thank you for um, being patient with uh, this sort of slapdash video. And hopefully my apartment is clean enough that it's not, <laughs> yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really think about that when I set the camera up here. Um, but anyway, I hope you all are having a great day and I'm gonna send you on back to Jennifer of the future. Okay, so now that you're back from seeing that, I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you about that project. Um, yeah, because I'm like looking around, I'm like, I swear I've done more knitting than this. Duh, I knit an entire sweater. <laughs> so um, yeah, I really liked knitting that and I'm really glad I got a chance to film that before I brought it in. So um, yeah, I think that's about it. I think I've talked about all of my projects. Um, Yay! I hope you guys are doing fabulous. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm forgetting stuff. Don't forget to keep your eye out for the Riverbank shawl and the soon-to-be-named other shawl. <laughs> um, those are, I'm really excited about both of those and I can't wait uh, for you guys to maybe knit one or both of them. Um, I do have some ideas for 
another knit along coming up. I was going to do a knit along for um, like when I filmed that episode that got deleted in the middle of September, I was going to announce a, um, a fall knit along. And maybe I still will do that. I thought maybe it was too late. But maybe I will still do that. Um, it, it had been my plan to do knit along with my Ode to Autumn shawl, which is a shawl I published last October. And I really, really love that shawl. I really want to knit a second one. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to knit one right now, but it would still kind of be fun if you guys wanted to do that. Um, I could, you know, just host it and encourage you and all that stuff. And maybe if I feel like I have, if I get through some of these projects, maybe I'll cast, I can, I'll cast one on too. Cause I, I do want to knit another one really badly. Um, so why don't we start this knit along? Um, it'll be our, our, driftless autumn or autumn driftless knit along um, you can do the ode to autumn but you can also do the riverbank and you can also do the soon to be named shawl I know this one isn't coming out for another couple weeks but let's have this cal go until the beginning of December um, so from right now the whenever you see this October today is October 6th so if you see this tonight or you see this sometime in the next week or so um, it starts now you yeah you have to knit one of those three shawls they're all DK weight how awesome is that so that works out well uh, so it's Ode to Autumn Riverbank soon to be named um, and you have until the beginning of December I will put a thread in the group so if you want to chat post your progress and then post your finished object it's all going to go in that same um, thread so the more you post and comment and interact the more chances you get excuse me to win a prize um, I don't know what the prizes are but because I'm just coming up with this right now <laughs> Uh, I had thought about this, but again, like I said, I thought maybe it'd be too late to do it since it's already October. Um, but if you have like, you know, a month and a half, more than a month and a half, um, that might be enough time. And then we'll see how it goes. If we need like, since this is already the first week of, um, of October, maybe it'll go into like the first week of December. So you have two full months. Um, that, that seems pretty reasonable. So... Yeah, let's plan on that, and I hope you guys want to knit along. Um, I will maybe announce it on my Instagram, and then definitely talk about it more um, the next podcast. But yeah, choose a choose a shawl. Um, if you download that, you can download this for just a few dollars tomorrow when it comes out, um, and. Yeah, and that would be really exciting because then you can knit the new pattern and also participate in the knit along. Huh, how cool. Okay, so I will talk to you guys all so soon. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being patient. I appreciate everybody just hanging in there with me and waiting until things slow down. Um, I'm, I'm really glad to be back to podcasting. I've been wanting to do this for such a long time. So, <sighs> Finally, finally, finally. <laughs> so if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for watching this episode. Um, give it a like, give it a subscribe, whatever you want to do, or come back for the next one. Even if you don't um, like or subscribe, that's just fine. And if you are a returning viewer, you guys know how much I appreciate you. Thank you so much. But yeah, you guys make... You make my knitting life so great, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So have a great day. Have a great week. Be kind to one another. Do things that make your heart happy. I will be doing the same, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.